Hi folks, and welcome to this Adobe in 15 Minutes vodcast episode focused on building and sharing digital portfolios in any subject with Adobe Express. Before we chat about digital portfolios and show you how to make one, make sure you have logged into Adobe Express with your school account and not through the free Google, Facebook, Apple or Adobe ID. By going through your school account, students and teachers can access the full premium education assets and resources. If your school needs support with this, check the resources below linked to this podcast. A digital portfolio is a collection of digital artifacts that demonstrate students' skills, achievements and experiences. Portfolio artifacts could be text documents, images, videos, animations, audio recordings and other types of digital content. There are generally three types of portfolios used in education. A presentation portfolio, a learning portfolio and an assessment portfolio. It's also common to have a portfolio that incorporates aspects of all three types. To create a digital portfolio on Adobe Express, when you've logged in as a student, you'll notice that when you go up to the magic plus symbol to create a new project, you have a feature here called Portfolio. And when you click on the Portfolio button, it takes you into what is very similar to the web pages side of Adobe Express. When you click on the add a title section, you can then start typing your title. I'll just finish this one off here. My portfolio is a presentation portfolio based on how to produce a quality video story. We can always put a subtitle in too. I'll just put in my name for the subtitle. And behind the title, I wanna have an image. And this is where we can start bringing images into our portfolio. The little plus symbol down below the title, when you click on this, it gives you a few little options. One is to add a photo. So let's jump into that now. You'll be probably familiar with the photo panel that appears on the right hand side. You can see at the top of it, I could upload any image that I've got on my device. I could go down to Adobe Stock and start searching for images. And I'll do a search now for video production. Adobe Stock is a repository of millions and millions of quality images that you have licensed for if you've logged in with your school account. Now I'm gonna choose this one here. And as I click on that picture, it appears behind my title. And I'm thinking, I'm quite happy with that, but I've got a few options with my titles now with Adobe Express. When I click on the image, you can see a, a few options here. I could change the focal point. We'll talk about that a little bit later. I could replace the image. I could delete it. I could turn my title and background image into a short cover. By clicking that button, it's now like a banner that appears at the top of my portfolio. All right, now that the title is completed, let's add some more content to the digital portfolio. There's a little plus symbol that appears below the title. When you click on it, you can see there is a series of buttons here that allow you to add content. You can add more pictures, you can add text, you can add hyperlinks, videos from Vimeo, from YouTube, even a video that you've made with Adobe Express can be featured as long as you've got the, the online link to that video, you can embed the video. Next to that is a gallery of images option, a glide show, which is a beautiful way of presenting. I'll show you a glide show in a minute and split layout. I'm going to go and click the photo option and that photo panel is going to appear again. And on the right hand side, I could upload an image, an artifact that relates to my portfolio. One of the things I do encourage students to do at the very beginning after their title of their portfolio is to get a picture of themselves if they're happy to. If they're not happy to, that's okay. Maybe another picture that represents them would be fine or an avatar of them. There's a really simple, quick way of getting a picture from your webcam into your digital portfolio by clicking the little ellipsis tool and then going to this section here called take photo. This activates the webcam and 
it's sort of working for me here. <laughs> My lights behind me aren't helping too much. What I'll do is I'll, I'll click this little purple camera button. That'll give me three seconds to take the photo and uh, then we'll see how we go. Let's do that now. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to hit the confirm button and now that photo will appear in my digital portfolio and I can add a caption to it. I'll say, just put my name as the caption for the moment. To add text to your portfolio, it's just a matter of finding that plus symbol and then clicking on it. Notice these plus symbols appear before and after every asset that you've added to your portfolio. And then once you've clicked the plus symbol, going to the text option. When you click text, you'll see a little formatting, floating formatting toolbar and a cursor that's flashing ready for you to start typing. I'm going to type the word introduction. And when you click on the word, you can start playing with this floating formatting toolbar. Notice you've got the option of doing a heading one or a heading two or a quotation mark or a bullet point or a number point or make it bold if you highlight it. I'll just get rid of the number. If you highlight the text and make it bold or make it italic, you need to highlight it first again. You can also turn any word into a button by clicking the linking tool and pasting in a URL and then clicking save, then it'll turn that word into a hyperlink. Now that we've added some text, we've got some images. Let's have a look at themes, different ways of designing the layout of your portfolio. Up the top right hand corner, there's a themes button. When you click on themes, you can see a bunch of generic theme options that are available for you. And as we click into them, I might click this one here, it will give a different look and feel for your whole page. Each different theme has a different feel to it. There are ways of creating your own branding and adding your own particular branding for yourself or for your school. But let's just uh, choose a theme now, which I'm gonna stick with this one here called Chronicle. It's the one I started with, pretty happy with that. Now I've added some more content here. And I want to show you how we can bring images in in different sorts of ways using Adobe Express. By clicking the plus symbol and then going to the photo option, I'm going to search Adobe Stock for storyboarding. And there's a whole range of different images that come up. In fact, there's over 2000 images that relate to storyboarding. And I'm thinking maybe I will just pick this one for the sake of time. And as I've clicked on this particular image, it's loading onto the page. I'm thinking I might go and change this by clicking the actual image itself. I can fill the screen and get a sense whether I like that. That looks pretty good. I could choose that. If I click the image again, I could choose to go window. And this is quite nice too. It's a nice way of breaking up different parts of your digital portfolio by having this window, this image re revealing it within a, a window. At this point, I want to link to a resource that talks about tips and tricks with framing images when you're creating video stories. So I'm going to click the plus symbol and I'm going to go to this button button. And this allows me to bring in a title to the button. I'll say framing tips. And then I'm going to paste in the URL, the address of this particular website. I'm going to center it. I've got to line it to the left. I've got to line it to the right, but I'm going to keep it centered and then click save. So now that button appears on my site. And when people click that button, it'll take them to that particular website for some extra resources. Another thing that students like to do with their portfolios is to add video content video content that's on YouTube, video content that's on Vimeo, or a video content that they have created with the video side of Adobe Express can be added to any portfolio. Let me show you how. By clicking the little plus symbol and then choose this video option, I can then paste in the URL that represents the clip, which I've just done. I'll click save. And now that video from YouTube is being embedded into my portfolio. 
often it's nice in a portfolio to add a gallery of artifacts or a gallery of images. To do that, if you click on the little plus symbol and then have a look at this button here that says photo grid, it'll bring up your photo panel and I'm gonna change that from close-ups to video production. And we've got a whole range of images here that we can work with. So let me just start choosing different ones that could be relevant. As I'm choosing them, they're appearing in my portfolio as a gallery. Once they're in the gallery, you've got these little tools down here that allow you to relocate them, move them into different directions. And that's how you bring in your gallery or your photo grid. Up the top uh, center, you can see uh, a bunch of tools here. I'm gonna to go to the preview tool. And this way we'll get a sense of what it looks like without actually publishing it. So here's the start of my portfolio. As I scroll down, there's my photo, my introduction, step one, step two, and there's my gallery of images. Notice down the bottom so far, even though I haven't finished, there's a whole lot of credits for any image that I've got from Adobe Stock is automatically getting credited at the end of my portfolio. Let me show you the glide show feature within Adobe Express. This is a wonderful way of presenting anything into your digital portfolio. When you click the glide show button, the first thing it's gonna ask you is to choose a background. And it's often a good idea with a glide show to have a fairly neutral background. So I'm, I'm gonna select this this picture here, which has a clapperboard on the left and then plenty of room on the right to glide my content up and down. Uh, you can also choose multiple, so I might grab a second one as well, just to give you a sense of what that looks like. So now I've got two backgrounds for my glide show. Once I'm happy with that and those images have loaded, I can click the save button at the top right hand corner. And you'll notice now as I scroll through, I've got my two backgrounds ready to go and I've got these panels appearing in front of the two backgrounds. I can move those panels from the left to the center or to the right. I might stick with the left on the second one and that balances nicely against the background. Within this panel is a plus symbol so I can add more photos, text, hyperlinks or videos into my portfolio. Split layouts are a great way of presenting content with maybe text on one side and image on the other side. To create a split layout, I'm gonna to go to the plus symbol again and choose this section here called split layout. And instantly I'm getting two halves. I could add an image on one half and maybe, what else have I got here? Some Another image text, a hyperlink or a video on the other half. Now, assuming you've added all the content you want onto your digital portfolio, it's time to show you some sharing options. Up the top center, for a digital portfolio, it's more likely you'll click the share button. And when you do click share, you've got the option here of publishing and sharing the link. You can also print it or create a PDF document of your portfolio. So let's just jump to the publish and share link. The title's already there and I can pick a category. Look, I'd recommend not to pick a category, especially when you're working with students or if you're under the age of 18, because this makes it potentially searchable and we wanna try and keep the under 18s as safe as possible. So avoid picking a category. Also avoid turning on your author attribution because that again also makes it potentially searchable. And the idea is that we wanna create the link and make it totally unlisted so it can't be searched. And then we can click create link. Now that the link has been generated, we can take it straight to Google Classrooms or Microsoft Teams, log into those accounts so that everything's protected within the school networks. Otherwise we can just grab that link and then share it online. And one of the great things about this link is that it stays the same even if you go back and make changes to your portfolio. If you do make a change, it's just important to go back up to share, publish and share link, and then you'll be asked to update the link by clicking the update link button. So that's how you can share your digital portfolios through the cloud, through Google Classrooms, or through Microsoft Teams. Well, that's it for this Adobe in 15 minute session. 
We do hope you've found it helpful and don't forget to keep being creative. Thank you.